Hi everybody, this is Dr. Nigro here with the screencast dealing with graphing motion. So when we work with physics, we tend to use our motion detectors quite a bit, and we look at how the motion of our object in terms of its distance and velocity changes depending on what that motion is. So we should be able to recognize these graphs and know what the motion is just by looking at the graphs. All right. For this particular video, we're going to call the forward direction positive and the backward direction negative. And I should say, if we were talking vertical motion, we would call the down direction negative, and we would call the up direction positive. All right? So we have a couple combinations that we can use. We can talk about whether the direction is positive or negative, and then we can talk about whether that speed or velocity is constant or changing. All right? We're going to go through all these different possibilities. We're going to start by talking about a motion where the direction is positive and the velocity is constant. So when that happens, that means our acceleration value is zero. So we have no acceleration. So if we're moving in the positive direction, that means we're moving forward. Our distance will start close and then move away at a regular amount every second. So we get a slanted line like this. Now the slope of this line has meaning, it's distance divided by time, which hopefully we recognize as velocity. And it will be a positive value because we're moving in that positive direction forward. All right, the y-intercept, here it's, I just show it as zero, but it really is your initial position in terms of where are you. All right, for our velocity versus time graph, because we have constant velocity, the velocity value isn't changing, so it's just a straight, flat, horizontal line, right? The slope here should be zero, all right? And our y-intercept should be at whatever our velocity value is. And again, I drew it on the positive side because our velocity values are positive here, all right? So that's what it would look like if we were moving in the forward or positive direction at constant velocity. All right, well, what if instead of moving forward or up, we decide to move backwards or down? We're going to keep our velocity constant, which again means that our acceleration value is zero. All right, for our distance versus time, this time instead of being close, we're away and we move towards the detector. So we move backwards. All right, again, the slope here, because we have a nice slanted line, is a negative velocity value. And then our y intercept tells us our initial position where we started. All right, if we look over at our velocity versus time graph, all right, we have a constant velocity, so the velocity value is not changing, but this time it's negative because we are moving backwards. So our slope will be zero, right? But the y-intercept will be a negative velocity value. All right, so this is what our graphs look like if we are moving forwards or backwards at constant velocity. All right, where it gets a little more complicated is when we start moving with changing velocity. All right, so we're going to start up here at the top. All right, we're going to move forward. All right, so remember positive is forward, or you can think of it as up if you're moving vertically. All right, and we're going to have changing velocity. So that means that there is an acceleration value here. All right. All right, so if we think about it, we're moving forward, so our velocity value is positive, and I'm just going to decide that the acceleration here is also going to be positive. So these two signs are working together. All right, and what that means for us is that we are going to be speeding up. All right, so we're going to start close to the detector. It won't be a slant this time. It's going to be curved because the velocity is changing because we're accelerating. Right? But it does so gradually at the beginning and then faster and faster and faster as we move further and further away. So that is our speeding up curve. All right, Because it's a curve, there's no slope to gather, so we say nothing here. And the y-intercept, again, is our initial position. All right, If we move over to our velocity versus time graph. Again, because everything's positive, our velocity values, we're going to be in the positive side of our graph, all right? And because we're speeding up, our velocity values are increasing with time. So we see a slanted line, but it slants low to high. It slants upward, all right? And because it's a slant, we can calculate a slope, 
And that slope value is the positive acceleration value. All right. The y-intercept here, it's I guess it's technically the initial, but in our labs, we tend to put it down at zero because it can be a little tricky to figure out what that is in the lab for our purposes. All right, so that's forward speeding up. All right, so we're going to go forward again and we're going to have changing velocity. All right, so our velocity value will be positive, but this time I'm going to say the acceleration value is negative. So they work against each other. All right, and if they work against each other, then we're going to see the object slow down. All right, so we're going to still start close because we have a positive velocity value, but this time we're going to be lots of velocity at the beginning, then it's going to level out as it slows down. All right, again, no slope because it's a curve. All right, and that y-intercept is our initial position. Right over on our velocity versus time graph, we're still going to be up in the positive side of our graph, but we're going to start away from that detector. I mean, sorry, not away from the detector at a high velocity value, and that velocity value will move towards zero. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not a very straight line. Let me fix that. All right, the velocity value will move towards zero like this. All right, because it's a slanted line, we can take a slope of that, and this time it's going to be acceleration, but the sign will be negative. All right, the y-intercept again, this is going to be our initial velocity. All right, all right, so that's what it looks like if we're moving forward, speeding up, or moving forward, slowing down. All right, so let's go down to these last two. All right, for these last two, we're going to look at moving backwards, all right, with changing velocity. All right, so this is going to be backwards. All right, or if we're moving vertically down, depending on what we're doing. All right, for this first one, I'm going to make the velocity zero. I'm not going to make it. If you're moving backwards, it should be zero. All right, but I am going to set the acceleration value to a negative one. All right, so again, as we saw above, when the signs are the same, then the two are working together, which means we should be speeding up. All right, now, hold on. A slight typo in there. Fix that. There we go. All right. It's going to look a little different than the one we saw above. All right. Instead of starting close, we're going to start away. All right. But like we saw up here where it went, started flat and went high, or sorry, steep, we're going to start flat and get steep just in the other direction. All right. So this is a speeding up graph. Again, it's a curve, so no slope. All right. And that y-intercept should be our initial position. All right. For our velocity versus time graph, this time we're going to be down on the negative side of our time axis. And because we're speeding up, we're going to start at zero and then move away. So the velocity value will increase. All right. That's a slant. So we can take a slope of that. And we're going to find that that slope is equal to a negative acceleration value. All right, and then our y-intercept will be whatever our initial velocity was during the experiment. All right, for our last graph, we're going to again move in the negative direction with changing velocity. All right, so we're still moving backwards. All right, but this time I'm going to make the acceleration value positive. All right, so we have negative velocity, positive acceleration, so they're going to work against each other. Whoops. Having a tough time spelling today. I'm sorry. All right. And if that happens, then the object will slow down. All right. We're still going to start away like we saw with the one before. All right. But we're going to be steep first and then level off as our object slows down. All right. So no slope because it's a curve. All right. And that y-intercept should be our initial position. All right, for our last graph, the velocity graph, we're going to again be down on the negative side, but because we're slowing down, we start at a velocity value and move towards zero. All right, the slope once again will be acceleration, but it's going to be a positive value. All right, and then the y intercept should be whatever our initial velocity is.
Okay, so it's really handy to be able to recognize what these graphs mean. We talk about these a lot in class. We're going to use them when we talk about free fall, right? So as you're working through these units, please make sure you pay attention to these graphs. And if you have questions, be sure to ask.